How's it going, people? Today, I will be reviewing the Daniel Craig 007 collection in 4K Ultra HD. And without any other further ado, let's get straight into the movies just because of the fact that I feel like this is going to be a long video. So starting off with Casino Royale, you know, there are a number of movies in my time where I just remember the first time that I saw them and I remember pretty much everything about that experience. And that was very much Casino Royale to me. I was in a theater with my best friend at the time and we both sat down in awe of this film. I, I really just genuinely love it. This is one of my favorite films of all time. And that is because of the fact that uh, just the chemistry of these leads. Daniel Craig and Ava Green are electric together. They are perfect together. And their chemistry just elevates the 007 franchise, to be quite honest with you. There will never be this much chemistry in any of the James Bond films. They are amazing. And on top of that, you have one of the best villains with Le Chiffre, and you have just an origin story that is perfect. You get so much of who James Bond is as a person, and you really understand why he is what he is and why he does what he does. And uh, you know what? You don't always get that from an origin story. Sometimes origins are just kind of boring. But this is not. And you add in one of the best parkour sequences ever shot on film, and you get one of my favorite movies of all time. As for Quantum of Solace, without a doubt, the worst titled James Bond film ever made. <laughs> but it isn't the worst James Bond film out there. I would say that it is just simply par for the course. I feel like this one has the most Bondian plots of all of the Daniel Craig era James Bond films. You have a underdeveloped villain that has a kind of absurd plot. You have a Bond girl that is aligned with him for contrived reasons. And then you have James Bond mixed in between the two. There are so many James Bond films that follow that template. And every other James Bond film that Daniel Craig does really doesn't kind of follow that. It rises above that in this film. Unfortunately does not. I expected more from the follow-up to Casino Royale, I expected a, a follow-up to the hanging plot lines that that film left. And unfortunately, that is not what we got from this film. But with Skyfall, they definitely bring it back. This, again, is one of the best James Bond films. You have Javier Bardem as Silva, one of the best Bond villains ever. You know, he is great and so menacing. He has a little bit of uh, Heath Ledger's Joker there, but I feel like he definitely pulls it off. And this is a return to the more classy, more uh, languid-paced James Bond film that I liked and uh, that I got from uh, Casino Royale and it carries over here so nicely and you get more answers as to who James Bond is as a person I won't give it away but that also adds up to a great storyline a great conclusion to this film and I love 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 the cinematography to this film and it is one of my favorite James Bond films of all time and so Spectre, this is one that I had only seen once. It was the one of the James Bond films that I have only seen the least. And, uh, you know, I, I really feel like it. sometimes when a, a studio works on a project or has an idea for a project so long that they get stuck and pigeon-held into their own ideas. And I definitely feel like that was the case with Spectre. They wanted to bring back Blofeld so bad that as soon as they got the rights to Blofeld again and Spectre, they shoehorned him into this film and they just really, they didn't 
work on it enough. I feel like the Daniel Craig Bond films are all part of one continuous piece. Quantum of Solace kind of falls off a little bit, but hey, Skyfall definitely picks it back up. But here, you want to introduce Spectre in a way that you, uh, you, you want to say that he was the cause of everything, of all time. Everything that has happened to James Bond has been caused by Spectre and Blofeld. It is very contrived, very convenient, and really hard, it, hard, hard to grasp. It doesn't sit well with me, and I know it doesn't sit well with most people. On top of that, they want to redo the Ava Green romance with Daniel Craig by getting this Bond girl here with this particular film and I will say that they don't have a fraction of the chemistry that Daniel Craig had with Ava Green. They are a distraction in this film and it is not needed to go back to this plot line. I know where they're going to go with it and I don't like it just because I just feel a been there, done that, better quality to it. But what this movie does have is great action sequences and a return to classic James Bond. There are a lot of things that this movie does that are classic James Bond that I love and that I have been waiting for Daniel Craig to do. The gun barrel sequence in the right spot. <laughs> Not at the end, but at the beginning. Um, and, and things like that. This movie definitely gives that to you. And as a longtime James Bond fan, that is something that I definitely wanted to see. You add in amazing cinematography that is just as good as Skyfall and different in its own way. And you get a movie that falls right around the same uh, place as Quantum for me. And um, that is unfortunate, but... I still did enjoy coming back to it for this review. And if you add all of those films together, you come to about an eight. And as far as the video quality here goes, this is what everybody wants to see. This is the big part of this review. As far as the uh, first two films, Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace, they have both 2K digital intermediate, so they are both upscaled to 4K and generally they look the same. Uh, I will say that they both have uh, a lot of film grain to them. They were both shot on film and um, it definitely shows. But it, it besides the opening scene in uh, Casino Royale, I would say that the grain here is very well contained. That opening scene in Casino Royale is meant to be gritty, it's meant to be grainy, and you definitely get that here with uh, this 4K transfer. Detail on the two are nicely stepped up from uh, the, the previous Blu-ray versions, which weren't uh, bad either. And I, I will say that you get a lot more detail when it comes to close-ups and a lot of the uh, the environments when you go into the hotel and casino royale or when uh, you are in a lot of the, uh, the the cars like in the car chase scene at the beginning of quantum of solace i noticed it a lot of the smaller details of the environments come through here as far as clarity goes this isn't the sharpest 4k transfer but it is a noticeable bump up and that is what i'll say about the majority of uh these two transfers here and as far as the hdr for the two of them it just creates more of a polished and more of a refined look to the film that i personally enjoy grass definitely pops out at you during the daytime when you are uh you're at the beach at Casino Royale, I definitely noticed a lot of the spectral highlights there. And as far as black levels go, they are excellent. There is absolutely no crushing. And that is excellent as well. And on top of that, one of the standout moments is the actually the car chase scene 
at the very beginning of Quantum of Solace that has a lot of bright colors and very punchy visuals that really lend itself extremely well to uh, HDR. It isn't anything that's going to blow your socks off. You're not going to need your sunglasses for it. But what I will say is it is a very noticeable and nice bump up. And then when we're getting into Skyfall and Spectre, both actually have 4K digital intermediates according to IMDb. And what I, the only reason that I said that is there is some contention as to uh, if Spectre is actually a 4K digital intermediate and, or a, uh, a 2K digital intermediate. But as far as the research that I have done, as far as I can see online, it is a 4K digital intermediate. And uh, what I will say is the way that these both of these films look, it will reflect that. This is where uh, the transfers get a lot better. They get a whole lot more detail. When you're talking about strands of hair on people's faces, scenery that is absolutely gorgeous and just has so much detail to it, and close-ups that reveal the smallest of blemishes, this is where it's at. You know, you can see every article on every clothing. It is that good. And uh, as far as clarity goes, clarity gets a substantial bump up on these two transfers. They are excellent. Depth of field is a noticeable uptick as well. Specifically in Spectre, just because of the smoky atmosphere that that film has, I felt like that lended to a kind of a flat Blu-ray presentation at times. This adds some dimension to that smoky atmosphere that I was looking for on Blu-ray, and I, I definitely appreciate that. And as far as HDR goes, there is some stellar, stellar HDR as far as just skin tones go. When you look at the opening scene in uh, Spectre, that opening scene, I love it. I can watch it over and over again, and it is greatly stepped up with HDR. You just get a whole lot more of a punchy feel to the color palette of that scene. And then with the black levels here, it is very important for particularly these two films. And really, uh, it knocks it out of the park when you're talking about the uh, fight scene in the shadows in Skyfall that everybody loves with the uh, sniper. <clears throat> Black levels there are amazing and they are what you want them to be. This is even more of a bump up than uh, Christina Royale and Quantum of Solace. But if you add all of them together, I would say, again, uh, you would come out to a 9 out of 10. I feel like this is overall a very pleasing bump up than uh, the original Blu-rays. And when we're getting into the audio here, this is going to be a quick one because these films pretty much all sound the same. And they all sound incredible. But unfortunately, and this makes me so angry, they did not upgrade these DTS HD 5.1 mixes to Dolby Atmos. I hate that. That is what I would want if you're going to re-release these James Bond films in 4K. And I just want to say that I want to put my anger aside for a second and see these for what they are. These are still amazing sound mixes that were great for the time that they came out. The score of all of these films are tremendous and they are so important. Almost all James Bond scores are important. And um, they are expertly, expertly recreated here. And, uh, you know, they sound great. They flip the entire sound field and they are gorgeous. Bass response is absolutely top notch here. And surrounds are heavily, heavily used. Speaker separation, you can't get better speaker separation as far as um, these DTS HD 5.1 mixes. And overall, these are really great. And I would be giving them a 10 out of 10 if I was reviewing the original Blu-ray. But unfortunately, I am going to bump them down to a 9 because of the fact that I wanted a 
Dolby Atmos mix here, and I really believe in dinging this for not giving that to us. And as far as digital copies here goes, these are all Fox Redeemed digital copies, which means that you can uh, go on the Voodoo app and download the HD versions there. That is right, these are, are not available as of this recording in 4K on Voodoo. And um, I did do that research for you guys. It doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It just means that as of this recording, they are not available in 4K. And as for the special features here are concerned, we have a few on the 4K discs to talk about, and that would be uh, the commentary with the crew of the film on Casino Royale, and there are actually two commentaries on Skyfall. As far as all the other bonus features, they are all on the Blu-ray discs, and you get the typical making of featurettes, and I would say there are about uh, three on each disc of about each film. And then you get production stills, theatrical trailers, deleted scenes. This is a pretty standard amount of special features here. But at least, at least you know, they uh, put the audio commentaries on the 4K discs when they were available. And uh, for that, I, I am going to give this a 7 out of 10. And that's my last looks at the Daniel Craig James Bond collection in 4K. Look, this is my Bond. This is my favorite James Bond. The best James Bond moments for me uh, are here in this 4K collection. I really do love Casino Royale and Skyfall. And as far as Quantum and Spectre, they are no slouches either. I, I genuinely enjoy watching all four films, and they are just a real joy to come back to. And when you add up all my scores for the Daniel Craig James Bond collection in 4K Ultra HD, you come out to a 33 out of 40. That is a fair score for what is here. I do feel like if they would have upgraded the audio quality here, and if they would have given us a little bit uh, more special features, maybe some new ones, um, then we would definitely be talking about a higher grade. But as it stands now, this is not essential home viewing, but for James Bond fans, it is definitely worth it to pick it up. And coming up next on the channel, I do have to do my Hellraiser reviews. I am reviewing Hellraiser and Hellraiser Hellbound. They have uh, just come in uh, re-released packaging. And I will be reviewing that release for you guys for Halloween this week. So if you are excited about that, comment down below. Let me know about uh, which James Bond uh, Daniel Craig film is your personal favorite. Mine is Casino Royale. How about yours? Do you prefer Skyfall? Many people do. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. You guys are awesome. I don't even say it because you know it. And I will see all of you next time.